Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Super Science Saturday. We're so excited to have you here. Hi, Britt, I'll introduce you in a bit. Thank you for joining us today. We are using the Slido interface. And if you slide down your website, and if you've been here for a while, you've already been familiar with it. But Slido is an interface. If you click on um, join, you will be able to ask us some questions and also answer some polls that we have. We're interested to learn where you're from, how many people are joining you watching today. And I hope you've, if you've been joining us since the morning, we've had so much fun. And I look forward to seeing what we're gonna do next, aren't you? Yeah, so Britt, I'm gonna hand it over to you and your presentation is called Infrared. It's out there, take it away. Thanks, Lorena, uh, and thanks everyone for joining. My name is Britt Stevens, I'm a scientist at NCAR. And the main thing that I do here is study carbon dioxide as a gas in the atmosphere. And that mostly entails building instruments uh, that measure carbon dioxide and other gases and then taking them out on airplanes or ships or towers. Um, and by measuring carbon dioxide in different places, we can try and figure out where it's coming from and where it's going to. And the reason why I'm so interested in infrared radiation and also the reason why lots of people are interested in carbon dioxide is that carbon dioxide absorbs infrared radiation in the atmosphere and uh, causes the planet to be warmer than it would otherwise. And because we're emitting a lot of carbon dioxide from all of our activities, it's causing the planet to get even warmer. So with that introduction, we made a video uh, for you that explains infrared and shows you what uh, some stuff I hope you think is pretty cool. So I'm gonna share my screen and then show that to you. Here we go. Hi everybody. Today I'd like to talk to you about infrared radiation. What is infrared radiation? Well, you may know it better as heat. When you roast a marshmallow over a campfire, the thing that makes that marshmallow really hot is infrared radiation that's emitted by the coals of the fire and absorbed by the marshmallow. Something you may not know is that infrared radiation is another form of light, just like the light that comes from the sun or from a flashlight. Sir Isaac Newton, who lived in England in the 1600s, was the first person to figure out that the white light that comes from the sun is actually made up of all of the colors of the rainbow. And he did this with a prism, which is a triangular piece of glass, and I have one here, so let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so now I have this prism in a sunbeam, and the sun's shining through it and separating out all the colors of the rainbow. Another famous scientist, a French woman named Emily du Chatelet, in the 1700s was the first person to predict that there should be some form of radiation out here past the red. And then in 1800, another British scientist named Sir William Herschel was the first person to detect it. And he did that by sticking a thermometer out here and he could see that it got warmer, which proved that there was some form of invisible radiation heating it up. Uh, and it's called infrared because infra is Latin for underneath and it's underneath the red. Nowadays, we have really fancy cameras that are sensitive to infrared radiation, and they're used for all sorts of things. They're used for studying the sun, uh, for taking pictures of gases in the atmosphere, and around the home, they're used for checking your insulation and checking to see if there are any wires that might be too hot. And I have one of the cameras that's used for that right here. It's tiny, but it's small because it's meant to plug into a cell phone. So if I plug it into my cell phone like this, and start filming, you can see what that looks like. Okay, now you should be looking through the infrared camera. And how, the way it works is it measures the infrared radiation and from that it can tell how hot things are. And then it shows you how hot things are as different colors. So the hottest things in the picture are yellow and those are probably like my eyes. Um, and the coolest thing in the picture, uh, which might be the wall behind me, are blues. And on the left is a bar showing you what yellow and blue mean in terms of degrees Celsius. And the scale just adjusts. If you point it at something hot, it'll shift the scale up. And if you point it at something cool, it'll shift the scale down. So you'll see that happen. Now there's some surprising things that are transparent in infrared and some surprising things that aren't. So for example, 
a black garbage bag, which we all know you cannot see through. And I'll prove that by climbing into it. Is actually transparent in the infrared. How many fingers am I holding up? Um, two on each hand, so four total. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Which we all know you cannot see through. And I'll prove that by climbing into it. It's actually transparent in the infrared. How many fingers am I holding up? Um, two on each hand, so four total. Thank you. Very good. And conversely, something like a pane of window glass, which we all know you can see through, is transparent in the visible, but it's completely opaque or not see-through to the infrared. And in fact, it actually reflects infrared. So you can probably see my camera person. Hello. Wave, camera person. Hello. And that's because a lot of window glass actually has a coating on it to reflect infrared in order to keep the heat inside your house. Here's something fun you can try at home. This is a remote control for a TV, and it actually uses infrared radiation to send signals to the TV through that little, what looks like a light bulb there. Uh, now it turns out that some modern cameras are actually sensitive to this infrared, which is just outside the range of the visible. Uh, my cell phone camera, which I'm using right now, isn't. So if I take this and point it at the camera and try and turn the TV on and off, you don't see anything, which is exactly what I see in real life. But if I turn my camera around and use the face camera on the phone and do the same thing, when I push the on off button, you see this bright kind of pink light. And that's actually infrared that's fooling the camera into thinking it's actually a visible color. So maybe after this, you can borrow a remote control and a cell phone from your parents and see if you can see it too. Be sure to try both cameras, the back and the front. Now that I've told you a bit about infrared radiation, I just wanna walk around the house and with this infrared camera and see what some things look like. Sound like fun? Let's go. Can see your bar. Ooh, hot feet. What did we find here? I wonder what it is. It is a puppy dog whose nose is much warmer than the rest of his body, and he's even made the bed warm where he was laying. Sorry to wake you up. Oh, he's so cute. What's this over here? Cool. The plant is actually cooler than the rest of the room. And that's because it evaporates water off of its surfaces. What in the world is that? Okay, we have a poll set up for you so that you can guess what this is. Stare at it for a second and think about what you think it might be. Uh, and then Lorena, if you can put the poll up, see what our options are. Yeah, so this is a really curious one. It's really cool to be able to walk around your house. So it's something in your house, maybe. Okay, the choices are Indiana Jones Whip. If you've seen those movies, you'd know what that is. A pet snake, an electric teapot, or a hose. And it's really cool to see as people are putting in their responses, how these responses are changing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we've all been looking at a lot of polls <laughs> recently. <laughs> I mean, like maybe if you dressed up as Indiana Jones for Halloween. Yeah, it looks like a hose is winning. Mm -hmm. This is a tricky one. Wonder what the hose would have in it. Look at that yellow. What do yeah, you think? Yeah, and if you. 
haven't already participated, you could join Slido by going down on the bottom part of your of your web browser, your window, and you can join Slido and participate in this active poll. What do you think? Should we show people what it actually is? Hmm. Should I take a guess as well? Oh yeah, please do. I totally think it's your pet snake that might have been walking around the house. By walking, I mean, you know, slithering, of course. Yeah, but can you guess the pet snake's name? That's extra credit. If it is a pet snake, I will guess a name. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to show the results? Sure. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. Um, and here we go. It's a teapot with a cold glass of water sitting next to How it. How about we put some in? All right, let's see what that looks like. Whoa. Ooh. Look at that. <laughs> That's lava. It looks Whoa. so hot. Yeah. Well, look, the hot water is staying sort of on top of the cold water. Let's put a little more in. All right, here goes. Oops. Oh, 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 I can't believe you did that. Why did you do that? OK. These two kids say the chocolate chip cookies have cooled off enough to eat. Let's have a look. Hmm, let me see, come stare at the camera. Do you think those cookies have cooled off enough? They yeah. look like they're on fire. No, they're not. All right, well, let's find out if we can have one. Hmm, two chocolate chip cookies are missing. I wonder who ate them. Okay, <laughs> stick out your tongue. <laughs> stick out your tongue. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, <laughs> who's got a hot tongue? Let me see. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Okay, let's put some water in the bath. It looks like a cold bath. No! Let's see what that no! looks like. Oh, it's pretty cold. You think we should add some hot water? Yeah. Because otherwise my bath. Ah! Mm, that's cool. Let's mix it up. We don't touch the lava. Okay, I think we've almost got all the cold out. Let me stir it up now. Oh yeah, that's a nice temperature. Actually, you know what? I think that might be a little bit too hot. What can we do about that? What if we put some ice cubes in there? Let's oh, see, boy, oh man. Cream. This is gonna make this really nice. Oh my. Oh yeah, that, that, why don't you hop in, Byron, you ready? No! <laughs> it looks like it's just the right temperature. No! Wow, those videos were cool. I hope you could tell we had fun filming them, and I hope you now realize that infrared is all around us. We actually use infrared radiation all the time in science. On the NCAR research aircraft, I operate an instrument that includes an infrared sensor for measuring carbon dioxide, and we've flown that all the way from the North Pole to Antarctica. Other scientists at NCAR use infrared to study the sun with pictures like this one that show all of the flares and other features on the surface. And other scientists we work with use infrared cameras on airplanes to look for methane leaks in natural gas facilities like this one. Because methane absorbs infrared, it shows up dark in this image and it makes these leaks really easy to spot. Well, that's our show. I hope you enjoyed it. 
But before we go, we just have one more infrared camera video to show you. See you later. That was so great. I love the comet doggy that yeah. you also had on camera. Um, so yeah, we had a lot of fun making that. I had a couple helpers. Um, and I, I'm happy to take questions. I also have the infrared camera hooked up and I can share the screen also if anybody wants me to point it at anything or just yeah. an infrared. Yeah, we'll do that. I, I think it was just so cool that you had the black plastic bag. And of course, you know, safety first, never go into plastic bag um, without supervision. And being able to see you through that infrared, it felt like you were just, it was just amazing. <laughs> yeah, the first time I saw somebody do that online, it kind of blew my mind. I just wasn't expecting it at all. Yeah, that's so cool. And um, I think that question was a trick question because if I would have guessed it was a teapot cable, I totally would have gotten it right. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much. So let's go ahead and see who are asking questions. And we have Checho and Kai and Amaya. Thank you so much for staying throughout the day. We have the question, can we use infrared vision to look for people buried in avalanches? Wow, that is a great question. I had never thought about that. Um, I, you know, I know a little bit about avalanches because I go in the mountains in the winter and I'm worried about them. I think that the snow and the water would absorb all the infrared and you probably wouldn't um, see them. But um, we we played we had this camera. It's actually you know Ngar owns the camera, but I have it on loan, and so we played hide and seek the other day, and it makes it really easy to find somebody hiding say in a closet or um, somebody hid under a bed and I could see the carpet was warm where they crawled under. So um, that was really good. I also, um, another cool thing they use infrared for is flying over forest fires. It can actually see through smoke. So um, if you wanna tell the forest fires exactly where the fire is, you can fly over and look down and you see right through the smoke uh, and can tell where the fires are. So that's kind of similar to the avalanche idea. Yeah, it definitely has some um, applications for firefighters to help them uh, as they navigate, especially this season and, you know, the seasons that have passed across the world, even Australia, like to be able to see beyond the clouds, definitely important. Thank you for answering that question. Um, let's see, what is another question from NASA? Why do we need infrared rays everywhere? Yeah, I, you know, I, it'd be hard to say um, that they're there. Maybe they're there because we need them. We don't know, but they um, they do uh, a lot of um, things that we count on, um, like make the planet warm enough to live in. So that's really great. Um, you know, before people knew about them, they thought all there was, um, were, you know, was the colors of the rainbow from you know, red through violet. And it never really occurred to anybody that there would be, be anything else. Um, but once scientists started learning about uh, infrared and studying it, they realized that, um, you know, that's how we stay warm. And uh, I think, you know, probably lots of things in nature um, uh, are sort of depending on being able to, you know, sense heat from different directions. Snakes can kind of um, tell where their prey is by um, sensing, sensing the heat, um, things like that. That's amazing how nature just 
can help itself. I play Dungeons and Dragons and, you know, I have like characters who can see in the dark, but this is different. This is infrared. So being able to see the heat signatures, it's awesome. Let's see. Um, we have a question from Genevieve. Should we go to that one? The question is, do clouds glow um, in the infrared, glow in the infrared light? Uh, they do. That's, a, that's also a great question. You know, I took this camera and I tried pointing it outside at the clouds and um, because they're so high in the air, they're actually really cold. So the camera tells you that, the, you know, it shows them sort of as blue or black because it says, oh, that's something really cold. But um, if you were looking from space, what you would see is that the clouds that were down low are a lot warmer than the clouds up high. So they, um, they would be radiating more infrared and it, actually that has a big impact on how warm the whole planet is. If you have clouds down low where they're warm, they can emit a lot of infrared light out to space to cool us off. And if you have clouds up high covering everything, they, they are really cold and they actually don't emit as much and that actually keeps us warmer. So that's a great question. And we have a question from Nigel that asks, where can I buy infrared glasses? Is that a thing to get infrared glasses? You know, I, they have, they definitely have what they call night vision glasses, which they use the infrared just like this camera, but they, they present it a little bit differently. You might have seen movies where they have kind of, it's almost like black and white, but it's black and green. So the light is all sort of greenish. And so, yeah, they sell those lots of places. I imagine they're quite expensive. Um, I don't own any, but um, people use those if they're, if they need to be, um, you know, an emergency situation, say going into a burning building and they want to find people, um, they have glasses like that. Well, yeah, what would be really neat, I think, is something that just um, allowed you to see the infrared kind of with your own eyes, like a, an extra color. But I don't know if they have those. Uh, it'll be interesting. I mean, there's a lot of science to be had out there with new scientists coming along and everybody watching here is a scientist already with all these curious questions. So definitely thank you for answering that question. And I um, think the next question, I actually was wondering, um, prefacing the question. So you showed a video and it was at the very end and it was the heat of a blow dryer. And while the blow dryer was on, like, you know, there was air coming out and it's hot air, but I wasn't able to see it until you put it on the floor. So this question by Jeremy is, if, if is, um, oh, I think it was essentially like, there's a, by Terry, sorry about that. But it was a question about being able to see any like gas that's heat. Can you actually see that? Um. Or does it have to be on an object, just like how you had it? The question was, you saw a video of animals farting. If any, yeah, we, uh, Joe Hacker had a, um, a science show here about a month ago where he showed some videos like that. They were really funny. I, you know, I, I tried to figure out if that was um, the hot air coming out that was being seen, uh, or if it was the methane coming out that was being that was absorbing heat. And I think the camera I have here is not sensitive enough to see um, warm air versus cold air, because there just aren't that many, even though it's hot air, not that many molecules in air emitting infrared. It, it can see warm surfaces and things like that. Um, I need to go back and watch that video because it could have been just like that picture I showed of the methane leaking out of those tanks with the plane flying over. It might've been that, that the methane came out and absorbed. And for that, you need an infrared camera that's sensitive at the specific wavelengths that um, methane absorbs. And uh, the little cameras like this um, uh, are kind of designed to see through, to not be sensitive to gases. So you get a good measure of what you're looking at. So yeah, with a fancy enough camera, I think you, you, uh, you could see it and I think it would look really cool. That's awesome. Thank you for answering that question. I think it's very important to draw the, the difference between the different types of gas that are in our atmosphere and ways that scientists use different technologies to be able to identify those gases around, around Earth as well. And it's, um, it's a similar question that Jeremy had. So I think for the interest of time, since we're at 256, I'm gonna go over to Griffin if that's okay with you. Um, and the question was, are there more colors like infrared 
that you can't see. Yeah, and I just so I get a chance to do this because Jeremy's question reminded me. I'm gonna try and share my, this um, the, the infrared camera video while I answer this question. Um, see if this comes up. Okay, I will try and answer this question in infrared. Um, yes, uh, there are lots. The the electromagnetic spectrum they call it goes from um, way out past infrared all the way through red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and then past violet is ultraviolet, which um, will give you a sunburn if you get too much of it. And then, um, and it keeps going on. So there's, um, if you uh, Google or maybe Lorena can share a link about the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, there's lots of other things, radio waves, um, television signals that used to come through the air, uh, those are all uh, diff just different forms of light, basically, um, that we can't see. And then to answer Jeremy's question, I, you know, it is kind of tricky with this camera. If you want to take a picture of something, say, you know, on your table and you accidentally have put your hand there first, then, you know, what you're left with is a handprint. And so people are giving off heat, but this camera um, is not quite sensitive to see it coming off. It mostly just sees... Um, the heat coming off the surfaces. Uh, yeah, that was a good question also. Yeah, thank you so much for being able to take that. Sorry, I wasn't able to read it out, but it was about being able to see that heat signature without the obstruction of a body. So it's, it's essentially seeing the remnants of where that person had just previously touched. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing in the infrared. Um, I think we have about two minutes before the next show starts, but I did wanna see, um, uh, I think Sean or Natalie, if you can please post up the, the questions again, uh, just to see if we had anything that we can answer real quick. And then maybe looking up on Amazon for the infrared camera, that might be a, a question for you all out there to check out. Um, since I know, Britt, you mentioned this was a camera that was provided for this particular program. So thank you so much, Dan, for asking that question. And the last questions um, real quick. We use infrared thermometers to take our temperature every day. Is it bad for our body to do so? No, it's not. That's just like an infrared camera. So it's just seeing um, what's coming off of your body. So um, it's not bad at all. I, you and know, I know exactly how much these cameras cost, but they're getting less expensive all the time. This one is maybe um, several hundred dollars. So, you know. Great. And then um, also same question about, but with our cell phones emitting that infrared or like the remote control, it's very minimal, I'm assuming. Yeah, so uh, electromagnetic waves are uh, dangerous when they have high energy and short wavelengths. So that's the other end, uh, ultraviolet and out past there, like um, um, uh, the radioactive stuff that you might get um, that could hurt you. So infrared is long wavelength and it's um, not, not enough energy to actually do any damage, so it's safe. Great. Well, with that, I would like to say thank you so much, Britt, for taking the time to share with us about infrared. And thank you, everybody, for asking all those wonderful, amazing questions. I know there's more questions out there, and I hope that we can um, continue these conversations throughout the year. Thanks, Britt. We're going to post up um, real quick the, the schedule, if that's okay to do. Um, and then we're just going to get started for the next show. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.